Hi guys and welcome to my latest video. Now what we have here today is yet another USB conditioner. And I say yet another because if you watched uh, my videos, if you follow my channel, you maybe already know that I reviewed Shit Weird and iFi Nano iUSB 3.0. And you already maybe know that I found shit weird to be unimpressive to say. It was giving some sort of improvement and some sort of results, but they were quite mild and modest and I couldn't justify using it in my system. But I liked iFi Nano much better. Um, I was telling it it was giving like depth and calmness to the sound and to the notes. And again, it was at first, you would think it's like a subtle difference, but after listening to some time, I just didn't want to return to using my USB outputs straight to the deck because there was definitely some flattening and decrease in, in, in bass clarity in calmness of the sound stage happening there. But this time we have a product called Intona. Uh, it comes from a German manufacturer. It's even made in Germany. It says here, I don't know, can you see it? And uh, this is so-called industrial model. And you can see that by red USB ports. And there is a more affordable model that is, uh, this one is around uh, 300 bucks. The more affordable one is around 200 bucks. I haven't tried that one. And uh, these days, there are even newer models that are made better and nicer than this one in terms of build quality and looks. Now, talking about that, uh, as you can maybe see, this is a fully plastic case. It feels really hollow and uh, to be honest it doesn't look like a 300 bucks device at all. It, it looks more like a DIY case or something like that. But um, it's also very lightweight and uh, how can I say, my first contact with it was a little bit underwhelming. But um, it's not important because this is a USB conditioner. You basically can keep it anywhere behind your gear, behind your deck, behind your streamer. You don't even have to look at it at all. The important thing here is what it does and how it does it. And I will not bother you too much with technical details because I always say this, for me, that's not important. What's important is how this thing is performing its duty, the thing that it's meant to do in terms of sonic quality when you put it in your system. Just before we go to that, I'll give few details. It's not powered by any means because Sheet Weird and iFi Nano were with their own low noise power supplies. This is just like a passive component you attach it to your digital source, PC or streamer. On this side, you attach your DAC on this side and it's just inserted in your USB path. That's it, that's all. It's also really easy to A, B test it if you want because you just change cable and that's it. Now that said, let's talk about how it actually performs. Now. In my system, I can definitely say without hesitation, it works better than iFi Nano and so much better than Shit Weird. First thing that I notice when I put it in is how springy and developed notes become. And when I say springy, that's, that's uh, easily noticeable on baseline. For example, some some bass notes that previously felt deep and substantial now feel they have much more control and they're part of music playing more than just 
<laughs> How can I explain this? If you can imagine a bass note that were that was just weighty but unwieldy, just like bass note that was dropping out of nowhere, like boom, boom. But now that same bass note is actually not dropping. It's like somebody is driving it. It has more nuances, more control. It's like playing a note instead of dropping a heavy tone and that's all. And that was the first thing that hit me, that control and how springy and how much tonality and curves bass notes got. Other than that, the whole soundstage gained in depth and also width and height. That's something when people talk about height of soundstage, I'm usually like, hmm, I don't know. I, I, I rarely think about it. I rarely hear height of soundstage between my speakers. But uh, when I inserted in Tona in the chain, I definitely felt there's more space in all direction in my soundstage in my room. Oh, and this thing is also quite worth mentioning regarding higher frequencies. And I'll take a cymbal sound, for example. Um, something that without Intona sounded more like a blended type of sound, like a cymbal that resembles more to a high frequency white noise. Like, you know, that feeling sound that's like shh, shh. And when you put Intona inside, it's more like a real metal instrument. Now, you still have some of that hissy part, but now you feel that it's more of a metallic instrument that actually has some vibration to it, some tone change to it, like, you know, things like that. You suddenly feel that there are more layers to that same cymbal tone than before. And it sounds more realistic, of course. Also in some songs with uh, maybe sub-pair recording quality and, and heavy uh, cymbal action, it sounds easier to listen because there's less of that feeling of noise or like you used aluminum foil wrinkled all over your cymbals to make that noise, but it's more like a metallic echo instrument. Okay, now I'll stop describing the differences in sound it makes because I don't want to get into the poem <laughs> and of describing how much different and better each tone of each instrument sounded. But I hope that so far it's clear to you that it really made a positive difference with uh, basically every instrument in, in every aspect of the sound. And important to say, there are no negative things to say about it. There is not anything unwanted happening to the sound, like decrease of dynamics or I don't know, anything like that. It's only positive. Interesting thing also is I heard this one in my own system, of course, and when I visited a friend, a fellow audiophile, in his system. And his system is even better and more advanced than my own. And in his system, we also noticed positive effects, like better control, better uh, bass precision, springiness, things like that, but it was to a lesser degree than in my own system. I don't know why is that. Um, my guess is that his source, his USB ports, are less noisy to start with. He was using a PC, some sort of desktop, and in my system I also have a desktop PC, uh, but I'm mainly using Raspberry Pi as a digital streamer. And as I already mentioned, I feel this one works better than iFi Nano and especially than the shit weird. But if I take any of the conditioners out of the loop and I just connect my Raspberry Pi 
directly to my DAC, there is definitely a lot of mumbling and a lot of clutterness and compression, especially of the depth of the soundstage happening, that I really just want to, to put the intona back in and, and enjoy the music again. And now maybe important thing to mention here is that I didn't get this one for a test. Also, I didn't buy it myself. This is just a loan from another audiophile friend. Uh, thanks for that, by the way. And I'll have to return it. This will not be kept in my system. So it's not just like justifying my purchase or something like that. I just compared it to solutions like USB conditioners that I already have and I already use. And this one is better. You know, I, I was hoping it will not be. You want your thing to win. <laughs> you don't want to think about purchasing another thing and selling your own. But oh my, it is good. I, I really liked it. it. It does things that the manufacturer promised it will do. And it, it does them great. And if I already didn't possess any of those other solutions, if I were using just naked USB port straight to my deck and hearing the effect of this one for the first time, I would be all over like idea, oh, where to get one, how to get one. It's, it's that big of a difference in my system. And that leads me to recommendations. Could I recommend this to a friend or to you watching this video? Well, it's a tough thing, you know, and um, I will try to explain it the best I can. If you're just starting in this hobby and you have like entry level system, then all the chances are you don't still need to think about it. Just giving an example, let's say you have an entry level DAC like Sheet Mod E3 or Topping D30 E30, you have 200 bucks amp, 200 bucks speakers. So let's say your whole system is 500 bucks. This one is 300 bucks alone. And in that case, it's not justified. I don't feel it is because you can spend that money on upgrading some of your base equipment, on getting better speakers, better source, better amp, and it would have bigger influence than conditioning your USB. Just be reasonable about it. It's logical, isn't it? But for those of you with a little bit more advanced systems, with a little bit more advanced level of audiophilia disease, if you're using USB connection and you don't have any USB conditioner, then I suppose you should seriously give a thought on trying some of these. Now, I'm not saying you should buy this one, just go and spend your money, but you should make an effort to at least borrow or maybe buy secondhand, find a good deal or something like that. So if it doesn't work for you, you can easily resell it without much loss. But I think you should try something like this. Because if you have a system that, let's say, all of your components are around 1K, source, amp, speakers, to make any significant upgrade, any significant improvement, you have to sell one of, of these things and then invest double amount to, to get anywhere from that. But this little thing, in that case, 300 bucks in that case doesn't sound like much, right? If you already have 3K system, this is like 10% of the whole price of your system. And uh, that whole price already tells me something about you. You're crazy, man. You spend 3K on, on hi-fi system. What? Why? Because you're like me. You already caught that audiophilia hard. And you probably are just waiting for a moment 
to upgrade something, to improve something. Maybe you just wait for opening in your budget or for that audiophilia bug to start working its way again. In that case, this might be a good idea to try it out at least. I talked about that with a friend uh, who loaned it to me. We had a short conversation about uh, does it justify its price? And uh, I told him in my system and the effect it has in my own system, I definitely think it justifies it. Because I don't see any other way of spending 300 bucks and getting this much improvement. And I already came to terms that I basically never stop spending on hi-fi gear. I like it, I'm hooked up. I'm probably hooked up for life. It's just a matter of thing, can I afford it? Do I think I can spend that amount of money better, like on something else and get maybe better, bigger, more meaningful improvement? But if I don't see that other way, and uh, I do feel this, this makes quite a difference, then at least for myself and for, for the people that are thinking the same way, that think about their system as a continuous path, not just something you purchase now and then you stop thinking about it for a decade or two, but it's a hobby. It's something you constantly invest your time and patience and money and you always aim to get it a little bit better, a little bit higher. It's an uphill battle, it's, uh, but it's, it doesn't have to be reasonable. Like all passions, like all hobbies, it's utterly unreasonable actually. But I love it, it makes me happy. And uh, for myself, I could easily justify purchasing this. And if you find yourself, in my words, in what I'm explaining currently, you could probably feel the same about it. But on the other hand, if you're thinking like, wow, he's so full of, he's talking nonsense, I would like to punch his face right now for talking stupid, then yeah, you probably should skip a gadget like this one. So basically that would be it for today, guys. This was my not review of <laughs> Intona conditioner. And I say not review because to make a proper review and objectively present its influence, I should probably test it in a many different systems with a many different sources and DACs. Because, you know, if your digital source, like a digital streamer, is already dedicated to audio and it took care to have the cleanest possible USB outputs. And if your DAC is maybe better than mine in handling noisy USB signals, you might feel differently about this device. So I can only give you my subjective opinion and subjective feeling about its influence in two systems I heard it in, my own, great impact in my own system, and my friend's system, very decent, fine impact, but not as big as in my own. And I really cannot say for sure how much of an improvement it would make in your own system, to your own digital source and DAC, to your own ears. But uh, that said, I really hope I gave you some meaningful information and that at least you had some fun watching it. And if you did, please click like and consider subscribing to the channel so you can see more videos like this one in the future. Thank you for watching and see you next time.